Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Maximilian, and in this video, I want to show you how you can connect your single page application, in this case, an Angular application, to your serverless API run on AWS using AWS Lambda and API Gateway. If you didn't have a chance yet, make sure to view the first video of this, well, of these two videos here, where I do explain what Lambda is and how you actually set up your very simple RESTful API in a serverless way. With that, let's get started. To get started, we of course need an application we can connect. And for that, I provided you with this GitHub repo, AWS Serverless Demo App. A link can be found in the video description, of course. Now, you can simply clone this repo to follow along. It's an Angular application, which, well, does the following. Let me show you what it does. Inside this project, once you did clone it, run ng-surf or npm start to use the local CLI version. And once this did start, let's visit the application. What you can see is it's loading and it displays us a chart where everything, all the data points are exactly equal at 30. Now the chart was created with, uh, with chart.js. So if you were interested in diving into this, you can start by checking out my code. It's a very convenient library for developing charts and certainly possible that I'll cover it on this channel in the future too. This chart isn't too complex. As you can see, this configuration here basically creates the chart. There isn't more to it. Let me shrink this a little bit. But the chart is not really what I focus on in this video, but I wanna populate this chart with useful data. Right now what I'm doing is I'm subscribing to a fetch data method in my topics service and I'm getting the chart data, some data points which are defined in this model. I'm getting the chart data from that service and here I simply hard coded it into here. So here I'm simply setting up my own observable which I'm returning, which returns me some dummy data. And I have a timeout function to simulate that I'm actually fetching this asynchronously. Now that's nice, but of course not that impressive or useful. So why don't we comment this out and instead try to reach out to a real server using the get method provided by Angular's HTTP service. We do have a real server or a real API at least. We don't really manage the server. We created it in the last video of this series or of this mini series here. So make sure to check out this video. Now, I of course already have that here. This is broken for now because I'm not returning data. Here, under API Gateway, this is this endpoint I have, simple test. And under Lambda here, whoops, we have a function which right now only returns a string. Wouldn't it be nice if that function would return some real data? So why don't we make this function return some data so that we can reach out to our API endpoint here? For that, let me create or add some code here. I'll name it response data, and that should be an array of data points. Now, this array can be structured in whatever way you want to structure it here. I'll keep it close to what I actually need to use in my application. And therefore I can really just copy these objects I did create there, these dummy objects and paste them in there. Make sure to of course remove the comments because you don't want to have that commented out. And let me quickly whoops, restructure this, looks better. And now let's replace this with the actual values you gave me when we asked you for your favorite topics. So I'll quickly fill this in because there we have 42 for view, 28 of you wanted to see a full project and there will be one soon. Electron, 26, Angular, that is 25 and Laravel was 21. Now we get a response array and with that all we have to do is return it here instead of our string. Now this Lambda function all of a sudden returns an array. All we have to do is hit save and that's it. We don't need to go back to API Gateway because what did we do there? We created a resource and a method and we forwarded the request to this Lambda function or we triggered this Lambda function whenever a request came in. 
And that is still the case. So we don't need to adjust anything. We change the code which gets executed, but we didn't change the logic when it gets executed. So no need to change the API gateway. With that, we're returning an array. And if we go back to the Angular application, here I'm expecting a result. And there I'm executing the JSON method and that is the normal Angular code which I can use to get the data returned via response, transform it into a JavaScript object. And since I know because I wrote the API, we did it a second ago, that the data will be an array of objects in this format. And that is exactly the, exactly the data and the format I need. I don't need to do anything else. You could of course use other observable operators here. I do have some observable videos on this channel after all. However, here it is in the format I well, I need it and therefore I will go back to API Gateway but only to fetch that URL again here on Simple API. Let's click oops, on Stages. That is a deployed snapshot of our API, so to say. Let's click Get here on that resource and copy that link address. Let's now enter it here and hit Save and go back to our running Angular application. As you can see, it's still spinning, so let's open up the console and what we see here is that we got a course error. No access control allow origin header is present on the resource. And what this tells us is that by default, and that is a default security mechanism, we're not allowed to access resources on a different server than the one we're sending requests from. So here we're sending requests uh, from localhost, localhost 4200, and we're sending them to the, well, to that URL here. And that is prevented by default. Of course, we want to allow it though. So we can do this on API Gateway and now we indeed have to change something. We can simply select our resource and what we need to do to allow this access is we need to send back the right headers. We could do this manually, and that is also one thing I do show you in the much more complete Udemy course I already mentioned in the last video. But what we also can do, very convenient, is we can click on Actions, Enable Course. Just make sure that you have the resource selected for which you want to enable a course. So for all the endpoints connected to that resource. So here I click Enable a Course. Now we see which headers will get added and I can click Enable Course. We get a warning that this will override the default headers we might have set, so that it overrides any settings we might have added. It also added this options method, this options endpoint. This is required for, for example, post requests because browsers like Chrome send a pre-flight request, so an extra request before sending the actual post request, to check if they may send a post request. And this extra options HTTP request also needs to be allowed by course. And that is why it automatically added this options endpoint for us. With that, it should work, but what's missing? Well, we need to redeploy the API because we changed something. And that's an interesting thing or an important thing you need to know. Whenever you're working here under resources, you're not working on the live API. You only deploy snapshots, the stages. So once you changed something here and you want to create a new snapshot, you have to go to actions, deploy API again, choose a stage. You could either add a new one or override the existing one. Of course, therefore also overriding the old snapshot. You can roll back though. With that, hit deploy. And now it will take a couple of seconds typically until this really is live. So the link didn't change, the URL is still the same. And well, let's give it a try. Let's see if it now works. Looks much better. Now the chart is populated with the data we returned in our Lambda function. And how easy was that? That is how you can connect your single page application to your API. And I hope this shows you which options you have with that. It's super simple to build amazing applications in a completely serverless manner. You don't have to take care about managing servers, provisioning them. You write your code, you create your API in a very visual way as you saw, and you hook it up to your application and that's it. Now, as mentioned before, if you want to dive deeper, check out my Udemy course and there certainly will also be some videos on YouTube again. I'd be happy to welcome you in the course though, but of course, I'm also extremely happy to welcome you in the next YouTube videos, of which there will of course be more. So, see you there. Bye.